philosophy and theology at that time was neo-scholasticism. And neo-scholasticism is strongly classicist. In other words, classicist, nothing changes. Ubique ab omnibus. What does that mean? It's held by everyone and at all times. Semper ubique ab omnibus. In other words, it's the same. Substance, yun lang. Content, yun lang. This is how the church thinks. It was strongly institutional. It was a fortress. The church was strong. Now, there were theologians who did the other side. This is what we call the Nouveau Theology. Or what we call the New Theology. And the Nouveau Theology is strongly historical. Went beyond Thomas Aquinas and went to the Bible and the patristics or the fathers of the church, both Greek and Latin. And please take note, the fathers of the church were strongly what? Sacramental, cultic, and catechetical. Especially when it comes to the initiation of Christians into the life of the church. Particularly what we call the rites of Christian initiation. They did research and therefore with the help of Leo the Thirteenth after Pius the Twelve, two documents came out. What is that? Providentissimus Deus of Leo the Thirteenth and Divino Aflante Spiritu. These are all encyclicals of the popes. This is from Leo the Thirteenth. This is from Pius the Twelfth. But Divino Aflante Spiritu said no. Do not simply read the Vulgate. Go back to the original text, the Greek, the Septuagint. Now at this time, it was strongly revolutionary. When people began to read the original text, these theologians became a force in the church, but under suspect. They were even forbidden to teach in the seminaries. They were under the shadow of a doubt. Who are these? They are of the Dominican, Jesuit, and diocesan schools. So Dominicans, Marie Dominique Chenou, Yves Congar, Jean Danielou for the Jesuits, and Henri de Lubac. For the diocesan, Hans Urs Balthazar, Kyung, and Ratzinger. These were people who were doing a great deal of research. In other words, they were researchers, they were studying. They were astute in their study. But with the biblical movement, they discovered tools. Tools in order to study. Tools which eventually became what we call the tools of exegesis. That is why they have form criticism. Eventually became also redaction criticism. That is why in 1964, The Pontifical Biblical Commission wrote a historical document, the historicity of the Gospels, identifying that in the Gospels are three layers of tradition. The situation in life of Jesus, situation in life of the church, and the situation in life of the evangelists. Sits in Leben Jesu, sits in Leben der Kirche, and sits in Leben Evangelium. And how do you interpret this in Leben Jesu to Der Kirke? You have to study the form criticism. 
You have to use the form criticism in order to study what are the original words of the historical Jesus. That is why Dumabas nga sa studies, fathers, you know this, ipsisima verba Jesu Christi, or the very words of Jesus. Tama? And you can draw out only two words. Number one, Abba, and number two, Amen. Actually, you can make a whole retreat for Katike simply on Abba and Amen. And when we were studying, you know, my professor in Bible was Raymond Brown and Joseph Fitzmaier. Mga patay na yun. So I was at St. Mary's Seminary and University and they were coming. You know when Raymond Brown, just go, Raymond Brown, ibungadar na. Why? Talagang. Look at me. <laughs> Please look at chapter 5. Now, let us now do exegesis. But, when he teaches, nobody passes through the corridors. Talagang closed. Raymond Brown lecturing. Nobody goes to the bathroom. Magdala ka ng orinola. <laughs> Raymond Brown. Joseph Fitzmaier is more lively. Raymond Brown is Sulpician kasi I studied in a Sulpician seminary in St. Mary's in Baltimore. But Washington, D.C. is a place of Joseph Fitzmaier. He taught at the Catholic University of uh, America. And when, when, when they were doing this, these people, they were studying the Bible. Sitzen leben Jesu, sitzen leben der Kirche, and sitzen leben Evangelio. If you look at the Jerome Biblical Commentary, yung old, sila pa rin sumulat ng mga commentaries. The, the third professor I have in, in, in Scripture was Addison Wright, who was our professor in Synoptics. And they were very clear. They were requesting us go back to the movements appreciate what happened to the church because without this sense of ecclesiastical history we would not be what counting the blessings now because the holy spirit was moving the church it's not the pope it's the spirit the only something that was happening is that we have good popes from leo the 13th up to the present even beyond that we have been blessed with good popes and that is something that we need to reinforce to our catechists. Number two, the liturgical movement now is spearheaded by the Benedictines. They did a great deal of research, especially in a place called San Anselmo. And the Benedictines researched once again to the original Greek and Latin texts of the fathers of the church and discovered that the celebration of the liturgy did not begin in 1570 with the Mass of Pope Pius V. Rather, they went back again to the household, home churches of the Acts of the Apostles. And when they went back there, they discovered the beauty of liturgical life. And then number three is the charismatic catechetical movement. <coughs> Joseph Human is the name. What does that mean? They said it's not simply question and answer. Rather, it is from this charismatic catechetical movement that we need to focus on this. The experience of Jesus and the proclamation of Jesus rooted in the Word. The kerygma is primarily telling the story of Jesus inspiring people because of that story, enabling the words of scriptures to captivate us. That's the power of the charismatic catechetical approach. Because before, it was question and answer. I'm not question and answer, but they were catechism. That is why isa sa mga misgivings ko nga. Maybe Father Dex will discuss this. Yung yukat, Parang bumalik ulit tayo doon sa question and answer. 
But please take note, that's not magisterian, ha? You ask Father Diggs. I should ask Father Diggs. Why? Because Father Diggs spoke to us, right? Now, skip sa American Institute. It is not to be on the same level as CCC or CFC. CCC and CFC are magisterial documents. UCAT is not. It is done by a group of people. Therefore, the terms of reference of studying UCAT is still CCC. That's the basic source. They just summarized the CCC into a more youth-oriented catechism. Am I right? Yes. That is why it's not something new. That is why I will tell you this. I am now revising the CFC. But I will have to revise CFC in a new way. Using still the format of Context, exposition, integration, and Q&A. Ama? But enabling the context to speak powerfully to us. Because the revision is monumental. Because from this day, Father Deggs, Father pa Sal Putsu, and I are envisioning this. Because some of the texts need to be taken out. Because some of the texts of CFC are not catechetical but theological. You don't, the you don't canonize a school of theology. You simply have to do catechesis in a catechism. Am I right? Because there's a dif difference, remember NCDP, between theology and catechesis. And that's the point I'm trying to sell the schools. In basic ed, especially grades 11 and 12, you don't do theology. You do catechesis. Dr. Pilar Romero's model in UST grades 11 and 12 is the best so far. Why? Because she was able to put together the two subjects of research and statistics and offer a three-unit course in grades 11 and 12 on the fundamentals of the Christian faith. Yun ang title. Why? Because a majority, a good number of students entering grade 11 are from the public schools. You have to go back once again to the basics. And the experience of that is simply what? The objective of all catechesis is for people to have a more intimate relationship with Christ. Paulikulit na yan. Liturgical movement, charismatic movement, and patristic movement. The fathers of the church were unearthed, especially the work of Jean Danielou and Yves Congar. What does that mean? Go back to the fathers of the church. In the Latin, fathers, it's Ambrose, Irenaeus, as well as Augustine. In the East, it is John Chrysostom, or what they call the 4th century mystagogues. That is why even up to now, in San Anselmo, huh? pag nag-aral ka ng liturgy San Anselmo, the great legacy of Anscar Chuponko is that the study of liturgy is strongly rooted in the Bible and in patristics. That is why all students in San Anselmo need to go to the original text. That is why these graduates of San Anselmo know how to read Latin and Greek before they can qualify for formal studies. That's why Joe Manabat knows the ancient languages. Which is right. Why? Because if you are in scholarship, you could not but go back to the original text. Because there is a flavor in the original text that could not be captured by English or modern languages. In the Bible, in the biblical studies, in the biblical now, you need to have four ancient languages and five modern languages in order to qualify. The qualification is that you should know Hebrew, Latin, Greek, and Aramaic. And then modern languages will be German, French, Italian, Spanish, and English. 
Pokonti lang yan. You know, there, there, there is a, when I went to Notre Dame de Vie in Benas, when I was in solitude, there was a priest there. And the priest was uh, doing his research, finishing an SSD. Yeah. Ano yung SSD? That is Doctorate in Sacred Scripture. Hindi SDHD, ah. hindi STD. SSD. SSD, iba. That is the highest form of doctorate for Bible scholars. And his doctorate, which is 580 pages, was defended in the Ecole Jerusalem. And he defended it summa cum laude. And his dissertation was simply on a line in the book of Habakkuk. <coughs> and connecting that with Elijah. Yun ang research niya. When he was discussing that with me, nakagano na ako sa kanya. Sabi ko, parang taga ibang planeta. <laughs> and he would speak Aramaic and Greek and then Latin. He's a member of a diocesan priest, but a member of Notre Dame de Vie. And when he left, he defended it. When he came back, the NDVs were exalting him to the high heaven. Oh, summa cum laude, summa, summa. Why? The Dominicans were so impressed with his defense. Why? Because he was, happy for why? Because he was shifting. He was speaking Greek, and then he would shift to Latin, go to Polish, and go to French, and go to English. What you say? <laughs> sabi ko, in one, in one person, there's Pentecost altogether. <laughs> Sabi ko, there's a flair for languages, no? Flair. What does that mean? Language is power. Eh? Language is power. That is why you know my, my plan, I told Bishop Malyari, I hope that when this new CFC is finished, automatic, automatic translation into seven major languages. Wow. Hindi naman Greek, Latin. <laughs> no, into... Cebuano, Ilongo, Bisaya, di ba? Bicol, di ba? Ilocano, Kapampangan. Hindi naman papayag ang, hindi, ang Kapampangan na hindi matranslate. <laughs> Why? Because you can reach more people. Because there is a language. Because with the language comes a worldview, an orientation. And that's my frustration, taga, yung taga-ipil dito. Father, taga-ipil, ano? Nagbigay ako ng 10 days ng training sa ipil under Bishop Tonel. Naku, talagang hirap na hirap ako. Honestly, Father. Why? Mag-English ako, mag-Tagalog. Nakagano lang sila. <laughs> Nang si Bishop Tonel nang nagsalita sa Cebuano, tawanan sila ng tawanan. <laughs> Sabi ko, talagang hindi ako bagay dito. <laughs> Ikaw kasi, mag-aral ka na dito ka sa akin isang taon para matuto ka ng Cebuano. Oo nga. Iba. Tama? Yeah. You speak the language of the people, yeah. huh? it touches their heart. Yeah. <laughs> Oo. Oh, oh. oh. Ang alam ko lang, maayong... Kaon matangi o kaon? Kaon na. Gamay lang. Maragul. But if you look at this for theological developments, I'd like you to appreciate the fact that Vatican II did not fall from thin air. Take note, ha? It is part of confluence of events. So when Pope Pius XII died, the cardinals began to select his successor. And the successor was Giovanni Battista Montini. Take note, going back. When John the Twenty-Third called for the Second Vatican Council, there were two others. Why? Because in 1959, January 25, the feast of the conversion of St. Paul at St. Paul's Outside the Walls, John the Twenty-Third said, I want to do three things. He was just elected, take note, in 58. Number one, I want to call for a Roman synod. After all, he's the Bishop of Rome. Number two, I would like to revise the code 
1917. And number three, I would like to call for the 21st Ecumenical Council. The third one brought the whole basilica down. Why? Because they were not ready for an old pope to call for an ecumenical council. Why? Historically, Vatican I has not ended. Go back to Vatican I. The bishops had to leave. Why? Because of the Franco-Prussian War. There were only two documents that were implemented, promulgated in Vatican I. Pastor Eternus and Deifilius with this papal infallibility. So Vatican I needed to end. When did Vatican I end? At the opening of Vatican II. Doon lang nagtapos ang Vatican I. So nung nagbukas ang Vatican II, tinapos muna nila ang Vatican I. Kasi there was no formal closing of Vatican I. So that's why people were at a quandary. And the bishops were not ready for this. So what happened? Historically, okay, John the Twenty Third said, Okay, all you bishops, get your own theological advisor. The theological advisor is called the Peritus. And the irony of it all is that these bishops who got the Peritus were these people who were under the shadow of a doubt. They got Ratzinger. They got... Uh, Shenu, Congar, sa amin, sa moral theology, alam mo yung sinong kinuha ng obispo sa Germany? Is Bernard Herring. Who is the Greek moral theologian at that time? Professor of moral theology at the Alfonsiano, which is the Institute of Moral Theology under the Lateran University. Lahat ng moral theology ngayon, magsasabi ko, ang pioneer si Bernard Herring. Which means these theologians who were under, the, under suspicion were the ones requested by the bishops to help them be coached in terms of the documents, in terms of the theological concepts that are being written. Now, what happened? John the Twenty-Third opened the council in 1962. But there was no document promulgated. And he died in 1963. A conclave was called that elected Paul VI. Giovanni Battista Cardinal Montini of Milan. And this bishop, known as Paul VI, now what did he do? He then, this is from John the 23rd. Say natin na ang speech niya, translated into English. Under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we intend in this meeting to seek the most effective ways of renewing ourselves and of becoming increasingly more faithful witnesses of the gospel of Christ. Study that. What is the aim of Vatican II? Bishop Robert Barron. You know Robert Barron? Yes. Robert Barron said, Vatican II has one objective. It is to Christify the world. It is not to renew structures primarily. It is for the church to Christify the world, to become relevant to the responsive to the signs of the times. And take note, the phrase signs of the times was used extensively by John the Twenty-Third, especially in the document Pacem in Teres. Actually, those of you who have Catholic social teachings, nag shifted. Nagsimula ang Catholic social teachings, Rero Navarro. Up to the present, and your latest, Laudato, Laudato Si. Ang worldview from Rerum Novarum at ang methodology from Rerum Novarum up to Pachim Interis 
is strongly classicist deductive. But from Pachebinteris up to Laudato Si, it shifted from classicist to historical conscious and strongly inductive. Inductive is see, judge, act. Which means the method shifted under the pontificacy of John the Twenty Third because of his call to read the signs of the times. Pagbabasa ng mga tanda ng panahon. And that is part of that, that speech of John the Twenty Third. What else? Now, from the renewed serene and tranquil adherence to all the teaching of the church in its entirety and preciseness, and it still shines forth in the apps of the Council of Trent and First Vatican Council, the Christian, Catholic, and Apostolic spirit of the whole world expects a step forward toward a doctrinal penetration and a formation of consciences in faithful and perfect conformity to the authentic doctrine, which, however, should be studied and expounded through methods of research and through the literary forms of modern thought. Please take note, this is very important. The way people think today must be studied. How? By methods of research. What does that mean? John the Twenty Third has a doctorate in ecclesiastical history. So he knows the methods of research. Don't think of him simply as a jolly old pope. My God, he's one of the wisest intellectual giants of the church. He was not only playing with his thoughts, he was simply working as a theologian. What is he saying here? The way people think today must be studied. How? By methods of research. Number two, by literary forms of modern thought. Which means it's a challenge for us. Remember what I told you? What are the predominant philosophies of our times in the 21st century? Postmodernism and post-truth. In other words, we need to enter into that mind in order to respond to that proactively. Or else the children are no longer listening to us. It's not, I mean, it's not business as usual. John the 23rd paved the way towards that. What are the literary forms of modern thought? How do people think today? How do people write today? Well, hindi pa nga niya alam ang social media dun eh. Wala pang computer, no? In other words, he was prophesying. He was looking at the future with a great deal of what? with a great deal of hope and joy. That's something about John the Twenty-Third. He's not bogged down by the prophets of gloom. Why? Because people were prophesying, oh, this council is going to be ended immediately because it will fail. John the Twenty-Third said, no. Don't listen to prophets of gloom. Listen to prophets of hope. For that is what the church is all about. Okay, ito na. Fathers, sisters, okay, basa nga ito. What does that mean? Christ yesterday, today, and forever. The substance is the same. Three persons in one God? Yes or no? Yes. Mary, Mother of God? Yes or no? Yes. The church is one holy, catholic, apostolic, yes or no? Yes. That's substance. But the way it is presented is another. You need to study how people think in order to package the substance in ways that would deepen your faith. That's catechesis. Hindi na mga handouts. Paperless, electronic, downloaded. Download all the notes. I can download this for you. You don't bring paper anymore. Siya sabi ng USP, may mga dioceses pa rin, hindi pa rin ma-electronic. Kasi may oras lang ang kuryente. 
<laughs> Ilan sa mga technical offices, wala man lang ni isang computer. Kaya hindi makasagot sa survey ng USD. Tama? Oh my God. You can simply say walang pira. May pira. Saan po punta ang pira? Nakuha nyo? Bawat diocese na niyo wala ako may pira. Nasa maling priorities lang. Ang paggastusan, yung talagang mahalaga. Tama? Alam mo, ang bilip ako, sabihin ko sa inyo ha, ito ay pupurihin ko. Si Bishop Tony Tobias. Bakit? He was able to motivate the priest. Yung second, third, at fourth mass ninyo, ang stipend niyo turn over sa chancery para ma-centralize natin. Di ba, Padre Aris? Padre Aris and Sister are the representative from Nova Liches. Look at the good practices of dioceses. How was he able to mobilize, motivate? What, the, what, what happened to him? He accompanied the priest. He stays in the parish. Pastoral, pastoral visit. He moves from one house to another. <coughs> he stays overnight in the rectory of the parish priest. What does that mean? He shepherded his flock. If you study the shifting from the Novaliches that came from Manila to the Novaliches now, you have come a long way. And yet Novaliches, for the record, is one of the poorest in NCR. What does that mean? It takes a visionary to put priorities in order. Tama ba? So, magsasabihin walang pira. The substance of the ancient doctrine of the deposit of faith is one thing, and the way in which it is presented is another. Can we read, please? What does that mean? The church is pastoral. And what does a pastoral church mean? It means the caring of souls, the concern for people, the shepherding of people. Also beautiful because this Sunday is Good Shepherd Sunday. At the end of the day, the pastor what? Loves his sheep. Knows his sheep. And therefore, it is not difficult to mobilize people because you have a vision. And what is the vision? To make Jesus known and loved. And that is so important. This is this came from the opening homily, huh? Gaudet Mater Ecclesia of John the 23rd. Pagtuunan natin kung paano natin ituturo ang substance. Kasi kung ang bata, tingin sa atin ay B-O-I-R-N-G, ibig sabihin, wala nang dating. Why? Honestly, fathers, I, I have to accept, no? We were all trained to be theologians, but not catechists. When we were reviewing the curriculum of San Carlos, of which I am part of, it's 160 units of theology subjects. When you study that, ilang units lang ang catechetics, Two units. At the end of the day, you're being taught to theologize, not to catechize. And therefore, the strong demand right now is uh, you need to you need not be formed as theologians simply because not all of you will be into research. You need to be trained on how to catechize and use the concepts in the catechetical work of the church. Because sometimes the frustration of people is that we talk over their heads or strongly cerebral or theological that we lose them in the process. At the end of the day, the Word of God is not served properly. That is why we compromise preaching. That is why the frustration of people for priests is that 
and strongly cerebral and <coughs> unprepared in terms of homilies. Think about that. How then do you package the homily? Which should be for me a form of catechesis because you echo the word. When John the 23rd died, Paul the 6th said that there are four objectives of the council. He opened the council once again, and this young pope, a theologian in his own right, said there are four objectives of Vatican II. What are the four objectives of Vatican II? Number one, that the church may have a more thorough understanding of her nature. Who are you, church? So he asked a fundamental question. Before we can move on, we should know who we are. Number two, the renewal of the church. And how do you renew the church? Please take note, ha? Mahalaga tong word na renewal. Kasi ang ginagamit na salita ay adjour. Adjournamento. Pero may ikalaw pang word. Nakakalimutan. In the study of Vatican II, ha? you need to have a second word that would check adjournamento. And what is that word in French? Ressourcement. 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 Return to the source. Return to the source. And what is the source? The source is the word. That there is only one single deposit of faith. And that single deposit of faith is the Word of God. And from that Word of God comes tradition and scriptures. And please take note, I take it seriously. You read the Verbo. The Council Fathers took great pains to put tradition before scripture because it was tradition that wrote scripture. Because who is the tradition but the church? The living faith of this community wrote scriptures. So hindi mo na sabihin scripture and tradition. I always check that sa seminary. But ino unang mga scripture. It's tradition and scripture. Because tradition is what? Lex credendi, lex orandi, celebrandi, lex bibendi. That's the way of life. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John did not write their Gospels in a vacuum. They wrote their Gospels in the context of the Christian communities. They wrote their Gospels by the oral tradition, by the celebration of prayers. That is why in the Gospel of Luke, Benedictus and Magnificat are what? They're songs. They're hymns. What does that mean? Aralin nyo, fathers, sisters. Huh? 33 AD, namatay si Jesus. Nama? Kailan sinulat si Mark? 65. Okay. Between 33 to 65. How many years? 32. Which means 32 years. Walang Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. By means of? That's tradition. An oral tradition is what? People coming together to celebrate breaking bread, catechizing, missionary enterprise, talking about Jesus, homilies, singing, hymns. That is why yung binasa kanina, huh? Fitzmaier told us, yung binasa, 1 Corinthians 15 yun eh, right? That is supposed to be originally a song with symmetry so that the early church can easily go back to the testimonies. And he showed us, it can be sung in the original Greek. Tinignan lang namin siya, kasi mo lang nakakaintindi ng Greek. Pero sabi niya, in the original Greek, you can sing that with the harmony. Which means the early church was singing the kerigma and celebrating it in the homes. And as time passed, Paul must have heard that and included that in the first letter to the Corinthians. 
the written word is only part two. The original is tradition. Which means the renewal of the church must be done by what? How do you renew the church? Resort Samon. Resort Samon. Return to the sources. <clears throat> and how do you re re return to the sources? By renewing the church. Paul the Sixth said, One, go back to the word. Renew your love for the written word. Renew your love for the word of God. Number two, renew the liturgy. Because in the renewal of liturgical life, you renew the church. There is a close affinity between renewing liturgy and renewing the church. In the Philippines, sabi ni Father Anskar, God bless his soul. Liturgical renewal has been highly successful because our people, by nature, are festive. Are what we call baroque. Hindi baroque, baroque. Baroque. And baroque is what? The intricacies of festivities, of fiestas, of celebration. What does that mean? Our celebrations of masses are powerful experiences. The problem is, the tradition is not done well in the public schools and in the Catholic schools because of what? We don't prepare students in the celebration. It has become what? Part of the regimen. Matapos lang. Number two, you get priests who are not also youth friendly. <laughs> And because they are not youth friendly, I'm sorry. They cannot transmit the word. They cannot preside. They cannot what? Galvanize celebration. You know, Eugene Walsh, our professor in liturgy practicum, said, Good celebrations build the faith, bad celebrations diminish the faith. And good celebrations are always preceded by good catechesis. What does that mean? Before you bring down the students to the field or to the church, you need to give them 15 minutes of mobilizing them. Without that, it would be Ibong Adarna. Ano Ibong Adarna? Magdala ka ng blade? Tulog lahat ng bata. Tama naman, di ba? Liturgical life is very important. Why? Because sabi nga ni Bishop so, the secret of a good homily is when people leave the church beating their breast, sabi ni so. Ako, the secret of a good homily is that the collection increases <laughs> every Sunday. Marami na simba. At pag na-motivate mo na yan, naglalagay yan ng mas malaking halaga. Tama? Ayun. May pira na. May pira. May pira. How do you renew the church? You renew the church by means of the Bible and the liturgy. Okay? Second yon. Number two, how do you renew the church? Okay, number three. The third is building bridges with other Christian bodies. Or what we call the ecumenical agenda. He continued the spirit of John the 23rd. That is why you know, one of the major directions of catechetical work is ecumenism and building common ground, discussing these things, huh? having a critical eye when Kibuloy huh? talks to us. Ang point ko is this, no? With Kib Kibuloy and Eli Soriano, I listen to them. And yet they have followers. What are they saying? Talagang nag-ano ako, sinusulat ko yung theology, tapos inaayos-ayos ko. Sabi, it's ano, disorganized, disjointed, and thirdly, dangerous. How do you build a religion based on hate? 
That's the way of Iglesia. When our dear boxingero <laughs> said, so stupid, I'm for that penalty code because our Lord died as a victim of death penalty. <laughs> Pag tinanggap mo yun, sorry ha. It goes against reason. And if people buy that, it's stupidity. And yet, thanks be to God, Bishop Ambodavid answered, na kailangan sagutin eh. Yung mga sinasabi ng presidente ngayon, masakit yun eh. Okay, agwanta, agwanta. Six years. Ah, agwanta. But you don't do that with Muslims. You say something against Muslims? Pogotulo. You say that to Christians, especially Catholics, aguanta. Pero my point is this.